Okay. Oh, adventure and key. Um, you go like reveal on this patch notes as they always do. Or like whatever you call it. like this whole lab post. I mean they are posts, but uh, yeah, I don't exactly know. It's like character previews, let's say. Um, I haven't watched any early access things that got released on them, so I don't know about that. So I'm just gonna look at this at face value and see what I think. In my opinion, again preservation. If you already have Gepard, you don't you're not gonna need adventure in my opinion, because Gepard can carry you through Golden Gears and Swarm, so you don't need anything else. So yeah, if you're thinking of it that way. But if you like him, get him. I mean he's definitely not gonna He has He has to have the potential to not make your team die. Because otherwise, it's just kinda like bad. Well yeah, so let's look at this. Character preview. Again, this splash art. Uh go revealed. All the way back in 1.6. And it was a big hit ever since. Today we have a character preview for Aventurine. Cool. So preservation, imaginary. Aventurine is a defensive character who can provide a stackable shield effect. Called Fortify Virgin for all allies and increases the effect resistance of all allies. Okay. You can accumulate charges through various means and trigger follow up attacks. Okay. Some story. You can imagine the IPC strategy. Investment department and one of the ten stone hearts. His concern is adventure enough stratagems. An ostentatious risk taker. He have done words to smile that masks his true motives. He won his current position by wagering against bait itself. His views life as high stakes, high return investment, and plays this particular gamble with masterful ease. Okay. Yeah, we've definitely seen that in that type of one. Sorry, that's for sure. Okay, these are just like um chat lines basically traces for every 100 of adventures defense that exceeds a certain value increases on crit rate up to a maximum limit interesting so those follow-ups are going to do damage when battle starts grant all allies fortified rager shield whose shield effect is equal to some percent of the one provided by the skill lasting for the number of turns. Okay, so a little bit smaller shield uh, than your skill. After an ally launches a full up attack, adventure accumulates one blind bet point. This effect can trigger up to a certain number of times. This trigger can reset at the start of Aventurine's turn. After Aventurine launches his talent's full up attack, provides all allies with a fortified wager that can block a certain amount of damage, and additionally grants a fortified wager that can block a certain amount of damage. To the ally with a low shield effect, lasting for a certain number of turns. Okay. So he wants characters that do follow-ups. Well, like, what's this blind bet? What does that do? Launches his talent's full-up attack, provides all allies with a fortified wager that can block a certain amount of damage, and additionally grants a fortified wager that can block a certain amount of damage. Okay, and then this last bit is... After he gets enough stacks and triggers a follow-up attack, is this the stack that gives him the follow-up attack? The blind bet? Anyway, provides all allies with a fortified wager that can block a certain amount of damage. So it gives everyone a shield. But then whoever has the least shield gets an extra shield. So, yeah, I don't see how you're gonna die, which I mean makes sense. Uh, leveling materials, cool. Oh, it's using this thing. Okay, I mean, it doesn't matter. And it's also using the run my boss and they need to add a new weekly boss to penacony i don't animation that's cool we've kind of already seen a bunch of that from the story so it's all fine technique yeah he rolls that for the shield i think the technique randomly obtain one out of three defense boost effects repeated use of this technique results in the retention of the effect with the highest value when the next battle starts, increase all allies' defense by the crit provided less than Oh, it doesn't give a shield, they just increase the defense. Okay. Sure, fine. Basic attack. Oh, that's crazy. Okay. Wait, what am I looking at? Talent abilities. Or... Any single ally with four. Wait, let's go in order. Let's go skill next. 
provides a lot of the fortified wages shield, lasting for a number of turns. One of fortified wages gain repeatedly. The shield can stack up to a certain limit. Okay, so you can't just go like infinite shield. It like stops at some point. Okay. Then ultimate. That, that's a cool animation. Randomly gains a certain number of blind bet points, then... Randomly gains a certain number of blind bet points. So again, I'm, I'm guessing this is the things that give him the follow-up attack. Then inflicts a nerf on a single target enemy for a certain number of turns, and deals machinery damage to the single target enemy. When any ally hits an unnerved enemy target, the crit damage dealt increases. Okay. So the thing, I'm trying to think about new players, right? So they're going to be all teasing because we will have Dr. Ratio. So he's a follow-up guy, which are going to be able to give him stacks. But the thing is, he doesn't do anything with Acheron. Because Acheron won't be able to help, from the looks of it, won't be able to help him. And he's not going to be able to help her too much. I don't know, like, you know, this crit damage. Um, so yeah, kind of weird. And then what's this? The talent, yep. For any single ally with fortified budget, the effect res increases. Cool, so no one can get stunned anymore or anything like that. So that's kind of cool. And when they get attacked, Avenger gains a blind bet. Oh, so when anyone gets attacked, he gets a blind bet. Man, this guy's gonna be able to spam full ups, no? When Avenger has fortified wager, he can reduce crown control debuff. Okay, so he's not getting any of that. Let's see if I can trigger again after a certain number of turns. Okay, it's kind of like Wofushuan as we were scale. Aventurine additional gains blind bet after getting attacked. Okay, so whenever he gets attacked, no matter what, he gets a blind bet. Cool. Upon, so, Departs Icon sounds like a really good idea. Or Landoff's Choice. So that, yeah, that increases the tone value. Uh, upon reaching a certain number of blind bet points, Aventure consumes the points to launch multiple hits of follow-up attacks with which dealing imaginary damage to a single random enemy. Blind bet has an upper limit. What does that mean? Hmm. So you should be able to spam his follow-ups. I'm not exactly sure what this has, has an upper limit. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so, he's gonna shield everyone. If they do a follow up, or they get attacked after they get the shield, he gets blind bet points, which at a certain point. No. Which, when you have a certain number of blind bet points, you're gonna get the follow up attack. Cool, which damages everyone randomly. Um, cool, so it's not just like an AoE thing. Because I thought that's what it's going to be. I thought it's just going to be an AoE thing, but it's like, it's good against single targets as well. Like, really good, uh, potentially. So yeah, that's why it's going to go with Ratio and Topaz, because of the follow ups. To get the blind bets. And also buffing his follow up attack. With Topaz, right? Yeah, that team is gonna go crazy. Aventurine Topaz ratio. And Ruan May. I was trying to think Sparkle or Bronia, but uh, it's just Ruan May. Um, Cause like it's a, you kind of have like a triple DPS team at this point. Cause if he's, he gets crit rate and crit damage. And however much that is, we're gonna have to see. But that's crazy. Oh yeah, and he also stops anyone from getting affected by stuff, by stuns. Which kinda sounds better than Fushuan. It just depends how big the shield is. But I'm pretty sure it's gonna be massive, so. And 
in my opinion, from what it sounds like, he's going to be more viable. He's going to be viable in every endgame. Whereas Fushuan isn't, because Fushuan doesn't survive in Golden Gears and Swarm. Well, it looks like he is, especially because he has shields. And shields are just OP in that mode, so... But yeah, he's going to be like a... No, he's going to be a sub DPS. I was going to say he's going to be like a... On the level of main DPS, but nah, there's no way. They're going to make him, make his numbers that big. Um, but yeah, so we have these. And then the light comp. Let's see. Oh, this is the art from when they announced all the people that are attending Penacony. So that's cool. Is that the highest defense? Is that higher than Chipotle like Hmm. Not sure. Okay. All in. So, 40% defense. Okay. When the world provides a shield to an ally, the world's crit damage increases by 40%. Okay. When the world's flop attack hits an enemy target, there's 100% base chance to increase. There is a 100% base to increase the damage taken by the attacked enemy target by 10%, lasting for 2 turns. When the wearer's follow-up attack hits an enemy target, there is a 1% chance to increase. So venturing takes more damage? There's a 100% base chance to increase the damage taken by the attacked enemy target by the attacked. Now I'm pretty sure this means like the enemy takes 10% more damage, right? Because why would you take more damage? Why would they want to do that? But to be honest, looking at this... The only thing they really get above Chipar's Lycon is the crit damage. And I guess it's 10% damage, right? Which is more than what Chipar gives you in terms of damage. But like in terms of defense, which I'm guessing is what you need for the shields, right? It's the same. But sometimes even less. if Because it's Japan's like right? So you might have gotten multiple copies. So you have like S2, S3. Which I'm pretty sure gives you more defense than 40. So... Yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, So basically... Oh! There's a 4-star icon. Coming out as well. What's this? What's the name? Inspire. Increases the world defense by 16%. For every on field character that has a shield, the damage dealt by the wear increases by 4%. So is every preservation character gonna be like a sub DPS from now on? Because no one else wants this compared to other things like why would i put this instead of land of choice yeah kind of bad light con and i think this damage only goes up to 16 percent well that was his own field character so this also applies to enemies but like Enemies even have shields. Um, well, I mean, Jepard does. Like the boss, but I wonder if that like counts. When he does like his big shield stage. Um, but yeah, nah, kind of... Dead. But it's a good like on. Anyway. It's a nice one. So, you're not gonna die. Basically, he is more viable than Fushuan in every end game. But he's annoying because you have to build crit stats. So, not actually maybe that good. In terms of like how comfortable he's gonna be. Like, yeah, you're not gonna die, but I think with Fushuan, you're not gonna die with Fushuan either, if you're not playing Gold and Gears and Swarm. But with Fushuan, you don't need damage. That's... 
just HP as much as PA as you can. That's it. And to be honest, you could probably do the same for adventuring. Just um, get defense, get max shields, and that's about it. I don't really care about the follow ups. Because you're gonna have your one or dual DPS teams that are gonna do that. It's just gonna be the sustain, right? But the problem is also that he's gonna be a sub DPS instead of like a amplifier sustain like Hobo or Fushuan. Well, but he does get crit damage. Well, but like, who cares about just crit damage, right? Um, so yeah, he may be less useful to be honest than I thought at the beginning. But I don't know, we're just gonna have to see what people are saying. Um, okay, never watched like any of the early access stuff. So, just kind of what I think for now. In terms of sustain, he'll be got here. But if you want to take advantage of his DPS things, then that's going to be annoying. Basically. You're going to need like defense pieces with double crit, which is great. Because uh, I don't think I've kept any of those. But I'm not going to pull them anyway, so. It doesn't matter. But yeah, about it. Can't wait. He's gonna be a good character. Can't wait for 2.2. Uh, let me know if you're gonna pull for him. Also, let me know how he is when he does come up, because I'm interested uh, in like what normal people do with him. Because <laughs> like content creators, yeah, sure, but like, uh, you know, they're not gonna be like relatable. Let's say. That's it. I guess I'll see you in the next one.